topic today is the Quran explains the reality of the world today. And it is based on the verse of the Quran which I recited at the beginning. In which Allah says, Ba'adawza billahi min shaitanir rajeem. It is in Surah Al-Nahl of the Quran, the Surah of the Bee, and uh, it is Surah number 18. And Allah says, Ba'adawza billahi min shaitanir rajeem, that we send down the book, meaning the scripture of the Quran, send it down on thee, O Muhammad wasalam, and sent it down so that this book might explain all things. And one of the most important things of all that face us today is the likelihood of a great war. The likelihood of a nuclear war. Unless you're living in Disneyland, you would know that this is very likely. And if nuclear war takes place, it will be a unique event in human history. There's never, be, there's never been a war like that, with thousands of nuclear weapons exploding, and probably most of mankind perishing. Many, many cities destroyed. This has never happened before in history. And this is on our doorstep now. Unless you're only eating... You have biryani here in Glasgow? <laughs> unless you're eating biryani, or let's make it fish and chips, <laughs> and going home and sleep, you would know that this is right on our doorstep. And so the Quran must explain if you have the Bible as your book, then you will use the Bible. But this is our book, the Quran. And our book says that this book explains all things. So what is the explanation in the Quran for the reality in the world today, which confronts us? When we look at the world today, we see a pattern for those who perceive things, who are a people who learn to connect the dots and read between the lines. And you do not seek to understand events in isolation, but you look to see the bigger framework, the bigger picture, the bigger canvas in which events are located. And when you do that <coughs> exercise in the examination of the historical process in which there's politics, there's economics, there's monetary economics, there's sports and entertainment, military affairs, wars, so on. then we see a picture emerging in which there is, seems to be a mysterious link between the historical process emerging for the last few hundred years and the Holy Land. We don't even hear the term Holy Land anymore. Uh, in, in the university, they don't touch the subject. <laughs> we would prefer to refer to it as Palestine or refer to it as Israel. But the term Holy Land is uncomfortable for secular scholarship. But we see a mysterious relationship between, for example, Britain and the Holy Land. I thought, I used to think that Britain was a secular state until 
I heard a man named General Allenby entering into Jerusalem in the year 1917 and declaring, and I don't want Britain to ever forget what he said, General Allenby was a British general. And he said when he entered Jerusalem with the British army, defeated the Ottoman army, Ottoman so-called Islamic army, uh, he declared that today the Crusades have ended. Oh, but wait a minute. I thought the Crusades were started by a Pope in Rome, not by the British government. Huh? I thought it was the Pope in Rome who started the Crusades and they were Christian wars and there were several of them and the Crusades were launched to recover holy Jerusalem. It was connected with religion. So how come a secular state in the modern age, in fact, the secular state par excellence which leads the modern world declares today the crusades have ended britain has a link <laughs> with the holy land a mysterious link with the holy land that the british general should say today the crusades have ended because he was involved in the crusade a crusade is a holy war Hmm? And similarly, we find the United States of America with a mysterious link with the Holy Land and with Jerusalem, defying the whole world. That's what Trump just did. Declaring that the United States now extends formal diplomatic recognition, political recognition, of Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel. And then the matter went, the matter went to the Security Council and of course they vetoed it. 14 versus 1, 14 versus 1. And then it went to the General Assembly of the United Nations. And over there they threatened. The US ambassador to the United Nations threatened publicly. Be careful. If you vote the wrong way, we cut off our money to you. Oh, what shameful thing. I thought a Christian people or a Jewish people, when they give in aid, they give with no strings attached. When you give in charity, you give and you take nothing in return. That's charity. I didn't know that aid was another form of imperialism. <laughs> and the US ambassador said, if you vote the wrong way, we'll cut off the money we give to you. <laughs> so then the whole world, the whole world put mud on their faces and they voted. Some countries abstained, uh, but 120 something voted against what Trump had done. Uh, before this, there was a conference, a United Nations conference on, uh, on uh, racism, was it? And uh, apartheid or something, on Israel. And uh, only one country in the world voted against it, the United States. Everybody has voted in favor. So why is the United States uh, displaying this mysterious <laughs> obsession with the Holy Land that Britain also had before the United States. Is there something which explains it? Hmm? And now we are located at a moment in time, we in Islamic eschatology, we recognize that we are now in a transition stage in the historical process, where a Pax Britannica, which had emerged mysteriously in history, there was nothing to explain it. No tools of political analysis could explain it. 
was replaced by a Pax Americana, which was built overnight. Eh? They built the United States overnight. Like you're building a massive building, and one week it was not there, and the next week the whole thing is completed. That's how they built the United States overnight. The fast lane on the highway. Of course, they had to use slavery to do it. And they were never ashamed of the links with slavery to build the United States overnight. And then Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica. And then we now see, for those who have eyes with which to see, and mashallah, many people now have eyes and can see. Not everybody eating biryani and going to sleep. That Pax Americana is now in irreversible decline. Those are powerful words, eh? <laughs> irreversible decline. But we have Islamic eschatology. That's why we can speak so confidently. But there are many who agree with us in the world of secular scholarship. That the United States is now riding into the sunset. <laughs> and there's something else coming to replace it. And uh, we recognize that their master plan, I've not mentioned who they are, but their master plan is to replace Pax Americana with a Pax Judaica. But wait a minute. They had said all that we want to do, nothing more, is to find a home for a people who do not have a home. No, you lied. You lied. Because you didn't want that alone. You wanted to create a state which would eventually become the ruling state in the world so that a Pax Judaica would replace Pax Americana. And thank Allah that many, many in the world of scholarship now agree with this, so you can't accuse me of any anti-Semitism and that rubbish. This is scholarship. The passage from Pax Britannica to Pax Americana required two what they call world wars. And the loss of millions and millions of lives, mostly Russians. Mostly Russians. And the passage from Pax Americana to Pax Judaica appears now to require the loss, the loss of even more lives than both the First World War and the Second World War combined. Because it's going to be nuclear war. Um, well then what is the end of this mysterious movement of history? Why, why does a Pax Judaica want to replace the Pax Americana? And what is the mysterious relationship between ruling the world and ruling the world of money? Is it that you cannot rule the world unless you also rule the world of money? And in consequence of which you could not have a Pax Britannica without the Bank of England? In what year? 1796 or 96? 1696 or 97? Don't worry, I don't have time to ask you questions. <laughs> As soon as the Bank of England was established and the movements began from gold and silver coins with intrinsic value, I hope you know the English language, money with intrinsic value, and the Bank of England replaced it with money with no intrinsic value. And so when it has no intrinsic value, 
It becomes like a monkey. It jumps up and down. Like your modern Bitcoin, jumping up and down like a kangaroo. But when you have money with intrinsic value, intrinsic value, it doesn't behave like a monkey. No. <laughs> money with intrinsic value functions successfully as money. And so came a new monetary system in order that Britain could become the ruling state in the world, that's Pax Britannica. You had to have a new monetary system over which the British sterling pound presided as His Majesty. And Britain became the financial capital of the world. And more ominously, the money lender par excellence of the world, the Shylock of the world. And then came the movement to Pax Americana. And you would know what happened at Bretton Woods if you do your homework. Bretton Woods marks the Salatul Janaza for the British Pound. Salatul Janaza, the funeral prayer. <laughs> the, funeral, the funeral prayer for the British Pound as the, as the international currency was performed at a place called Bretton Woods. And then the new money emerged to replace the sterling pound, which is His Majesty, the US dollar. And a new monetary system emerged with the International Monetary Fund. And if you have some time, you may want to take a look at the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund and ask yourself, why did they ban the use of gold as money? I wonder why. They would not tell me. Even if I go and I hold them, hold them by the back of their neck and I shake them up, tell me the reason. Oh, they would not tell me. No. I can deny them their dinner still. They would prefer to go to sleep without food, but they will not tell me the reason. Why have you banned the use of gold as money? Don't you have any shame? Are you a shameless people? That you will ban the use of gold of money and you would not even explain why you've done it. Since you're not explaining, well, let me explain. The reason why they banned the use of gold as money is because once real money comes in the market, it will drive out all the bogus and fraudulent and haram money. That's why. <coughs> And then, because of this control of money, you enrich yourself unjustly. And uh, there's a warning in the Quran for those who consume wealth unjustly. Money lending is one form, money lending on interest, usury or riba. And the other form is bogus <coughs> money, using bogus money and ripping off the masses around the world. And you growing fat and fat and fat with rich, with wealth, and the rest of the world in miserable poverty. Do you know what Allah has said? What is waiting for you? riba, <laughs> Those who consume usury, the fruit of your banking system, the fruit of your monetary system, the wealth that you gain unjustly at the expense of others, you're going to pay a price for that. Alladhina akuluna riba, those who consume riba, usury. La yakubuna illa kama yakum alladhi yatakhabbatuhu shaytanu min al You are eventually going to live a way of life. Which when we look at you, we we'll say, these are people who have been driven to madness by the touch of shaitan. <laughs> That's the price waiting for them. And already the evidence is there, it's starting. That someone goes into a supermarket and he starts shooting and he shoots and he shoots 
and he shoots the, the monetary capital of the world, the United States. And then he goes in a school and he starts shooting and he kills so many. And then he goes into a, 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 um, a restaurant and he starts shooting and killing so many. Yeah. And it's happening again and again. A people driven to madness by the touch of Shaitan. But there's more in store for them that the Quran has revealed and we'll, we will explain that to you a little later. So then what is the end game? Why do they want to rule the world? Why this most mysterious change now from the US dollar? To cryptocurrencies and to Bitcoin. If you are a scholar of Islam, I have a warning for you. Because you are my brother. You've spent a long time studying the religion in a Darululu, in a Jamia. I have a warning for you. The warning is do not betray the Quran.